glad you're joining us for Hope today. And you know, we just want to encourage you with this. As God just put this in my spirit, He is repositioning you to prosper in all areas of your life. And that's why we're so glad Tom, Amy, and I were all here together to encourage you, to uplift you, because you know what? We love you and Jesus loves you even more. So we're so glad that you're joining us today. It's a great oh, day. We are so glad <laughs> that you're joining us. We're excited to have you here. We're excited for uh, this program. It's going to touch your life. And you know, if you're in a situation you find yourself, you say, I need God to touch me. I need, then you, you want to be here. You want to be part of this program. And you know, I was driving here today and I just kept saying, I'm full, I'm full, I'm full. And it's so easier if you live off the top of the barrel than it is if you live off the bottom of the barrel. Just stay filled up. And one of the ways you can stay filled up of course, reading the Word of God and spending time with God, but watching Hope today will yes. fill you up because we're here bringing good news. We're bringing words of faith, words of hope, words of peace, so we can stay filled up today. You know what I'm so excited? It's like it's a new season. You can just feel it in the air. You know, you see like the birds are singing. I mean, I guess they've been singing all the time for a while, <laughs> but just seeing all the plants and seeing the flowers and just seeing what our world is what's happening, even as you know, the world is we're all beginning to open back up, even here in New York City that is opening back up with the pandemic. So things are definitely shifting. I think what's going on, there's something happening spiritually in all of us, but it's also happening in the natural. So I'm just really excited for what God is doing. And I just really believe Tom and Amy that like God is doing a new thing. He's having people rise up. Things are happening like never before, Tom. And, and I think that we're all like, uh, we're all kind of mask weary. We're all kind of, uh, you know, uh, you know, hand sanitizer weary, but you know, we, we, we've come through, we're coming through. God brings us through those things. Whatever you're going through, God is bringing you through that. Uh, you know, uh, my, uh, my, my, my former pastor's mother, she was a saint of God, and she used to say, it, it came to pass. You know how the Bible it says, it came to pass? She, said, yeah. she would say that all the time. Yeah. It didn't come to stay, it came to pass. You know, that's yes, kind of like a, kind of a cool that. thing to remember. The things pass, mm -hmm. and so when you're in this season and you can't see the forest for the trees, you can't see ahead of yourself, God says it's, com it's coming to pass, so you will pass through that. If you need extra prayer today, please call our prayer partners at 888-665-4483. It's a day to trust the Lord. Well, when you think about the word pass, we'll go through the valley of the shadow of death and we'll fear no evil. There's something about going through, you know, like this too shall pass. I mean, what, what's happening right now in your life, what's happening right now with your kids, what's happening right now with your, your best friend, this too shall pass. You know, sometimes I think that, you know, situations can look so big and like it's the end of the world, like it's the end of my life, that bankruptcy, that, that screw up, I messed up, I failed, I, I, I have fallen short, but that is not all. This is not the end of your story. You're only just beginning. Pick back up and let's pass through to the other side of victory. I love that so much. And you know, one thing that God has just really been speaking to me about, because I think it's really important when our thought, what's your thought life look like? Because there was, you know, recently I'm being very transparent. My thought life was a hot mess. And God was really speaking to me that there's a scripture and I can't remember where it is. I think it might be in Romans, but it just talks about if you have evil thoughts, it's like you're walking away from the living God. And so I just want to encourage you. What is your thought life? What are you thinking? What are the thoughts that you have towards certain people or certain circumstances or certain situations? Make Jesus Lord. Lord over your thoughts. Make Jesus Lord. He's the Lord over our lives, right? And another thing I just want to encourage you with, because even in this season, I remember I'd be talking to God and he was just really dealing with me. And he's like, I ain't sitting even deal with you <laughs> a little bit. But I think a lot of times when we're going through things, right? When we're walking through a hard situation or a hard season or waiting on the promises of God, or you're kind of like, what is happening? You're like, God, why? God really spoke to me that he's not doing this to you. He's doing it for you. So whatever you're walking through, whatever fires, whatever trials, whatever tribulations, whatever thing you're waiting on, God, just be like, God, you're doing this for me. Because you know what, when we go through something, just like you were saying, Amy, that we're going, we're passing through. And so we pass through. So guess what? It's not just about us, but so we can tell someone else, you know what? I was walking through this trial. I was going through this situation, but God carried me through. And you can have tangible things that you're saying, this is how he walked beside me. This is how he was Emmanuel, which means God with us. Jesus is with you wherever you are going. And so we're 
just so encouraged that you are watching today because we really believe that the Holy Spirit is redirecting, doing things so we can speak right to your spirit so you can prosper, that you can grow, that you can be all that God is calling you to be in this season. You know, Sydney, that, that is so good because, it, it, you know, I think it's so important that we remember to tell each other the victories, to tell each other what God has done. And you mentioned that, 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 that God, you know, that you're gonna, we're gonna be able to say that we passed through those things. You know, like I've got, I've got a praise report here before we get going with the scripture. I just wanted to, like Robin, she had gone through a horrible situation. Her husband passed away over a year ago and she was in a, in a time of depression. It's understandable. We, we sort of understand that she's, she's going through this, but she kept calling the prayer line and calling the prayer line. And she says that the, the depression is lifting. It's leaving. Yes. She called back in to praise the Lord. You know, and I, I, I guys, I just had our, uh, uh, we have a, we have an intern here and she came up to me today and said that hope today uh, well, she would watch in her dorm room and it really encouraged her to hear. And hey, we like feedback. We yeah. like to hear if hope today is blessing you, call our prayer line and say, hey, those guys are blessing me. Your show's blessing me. God's doing that. We love to hear that. Yeah. And she's, her, she's amazing. Her name is Christiane. And I think it's just so, it's encouraging just to hear, you know, from the next generation. And just so she's on fire for God. And we just love, we love her so much. We're so glad that God brought her to us. And I think it's so important that we just have that fire that burns within mm -hmm. us. And that, you know, I just even thinking now we're all called to be candles. Like Amy, you're a candle. Tom, you're a candle. I'm a candle. And we're burning. But we need to pass on that light to other people. So, you know, if your candle's a little low or you're feeling dry and weary, we are lighting your candle today through the power of the Holy Spirit because we want you to burn bright for Jesus. Well, we have a scripture for you today. And we're going to, this, this guys, this one, it, I had to dig in a little bit. <laughs> it's Isaiah 30, 15. For this is what the Lord God, the Holy One in Israel has said, in repentance and rest, you will be mm -hmm. saved. Mm -hmm. In quietness and trust is your strength. Mm -hmm. You know, I, 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 know, I know why I did it, but the, the producer cut off the last little part of that verse. It says, but you were not willing. <laughs> I'm like, whoa. Okay, Lord, what's it about? It's interesting. The context is that Israel was seeking after, I believe it was Egypt, seeking after Egypt to be their strength. They were hiring out their army to be their strength. And God's, you know, can you imagine? Can you imagine Israel is going to rely on Egypt? for strength? Isn't that where they just, well, not just, but where they had left several centuries before? And, and God says, you're going to rely on them. Don't you remember that I parted the Red Sea, mm -hmm. that I, I defeated their army for you, and now you're going to rely on them instead of relying on me? Yep. And he's saying, look, you would have had, if you would have repented, you would have had rest. Mm -hmm. You would have had strength. But you didn't. Instead, you want to rely on them. I just found that Ooh, fascinating. Jesus. Yeah. Do we need a revival of repentance and rest like never before? If ever there was a time to repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I, I was heading in the wrong direction. I was doing it in my own ability. And I repent. And to repent means you stop doing what you were doing. And you turn around. You do like a whole turn around. So I pray today that like a fire and a passion will rise up in you, that you will say, I am done with that. I'm done with that sin. I'm done with those old thoughts. I'm done with that toxic behavior. I'm done with depression. I repent and I'm going to turn my heart completely to God. I remember the faithfulness of God. I remember when he saved me. I remember when he brought me out. I, re I remember when he redeemed my life from the pit. And I'm going to return to him. And in him, I will find rest, Sydney, mm. like I've never known before. I think that's a big word, like a lot of times today, we don't think about resting and resting in God. And what does that mean? Because we live in such a culture where it's so busy, people are running around. I think we want everything instantly. But I just want to encourage you that when we are resting in him, I just really feel, I know in my season that God is calling us to a season of rest and that when you're resting in him and you rest in his presence, it's an amazing feeling that you have. So, uh, you know, we're going to change the, the, the direction of the, the show here in just a second. We'll have our guest here. But we don't want to miss this point to take this moment to say, God, what are you speaking to me? And whatever God is speaking to you, do that thing. Trust in him. He is going to bring you through. Remember, it came to pass. Amy. 
It's amazing how God is always speaking to me about Chick-fil-A. And if you're like me, a huge fan of Chick-fil-A, then you're going to love who our next guest is. She is the daughter of Jeanette and Truett Cathy, founder of Chick-fil-A, and she, like her father, is a beloved leader, a communicator, and entrepreneur Trudy Kathy Wright is also the host of her new podcast in which she shares heartwarming stories filled with life lessons that she has learned along the way. Trudy, welcome to Hope Today. Good morning. What a joy it is to be here with you. Thank you for the invitation. We are just so honored to have you here and so excited to dig in to this new podcast where you really share amazing stories. What is your story? Yeah, well, my story is really my walk with the Lord. I have been so fortunate to have been raised by parents who were followers of Jesus Christ, taught me how about the love of the Lord. And my walk has just been trying to be obedient to God and steward all the things that God has entrusted to us. You know, you mentioned Chick-fil-A, and we like to kind of remind people that we're, we're not really in the chicken business. We're actually in the people business. We simply use something called a Chick-fil-A sandwich as a tool to allow us to connect with other people. And that's really one of the reasons I have launched this podcast, because one of my passions has been to really leverage my opportunity of influence. And podcasts may be one way that I can just share stories of life lessons that I have learned, and hopefully other people can be encouraged through those. How have your parents impacted your life? So many ways my parents have impacted my life. I go back to my teenage years and I remember going out the back door and my mother used to say, remember who you are and whose you are. And that was important for me to hear as a teenager because, you know, I thought a lot about myself and I probably was very selfish in those uh, in that season of time. And my mother wanted to remind me that it's not about what you do. It's not even about who you're related to. It's all about what God says, who God says you are, that you are loved, that you're forgiven. You have a, a, a life that can be a very abundant life if you believe and receive and walk with Jesus Christ. And so I appreciate my mom reminding me of that. I also learned from my dad. Um, my dad would tell me, Trudy, if you'll help other people get what they want in life, you'll eventually get what you want out of life. Wow. And that really helped me to understand that I needed to be looking out at other people and what are their needs and how can I help them accomplish what they want to accomplish. And in doing that, I'll find out that I'll accomplish what I want to accomplish as well. What is your hope with your podcast along the way? Yeah, well, let me just tell you that it's, it's a new adventure for me. I feel like God always takes us out of our comfort zone from time to time. I'd rather be speaking in a room full of people looking face to face with people, but trying to launch the podcast, what I would love to accomplish in it is to really share life stories that will encourage others, but also to help them to learn from other people's experiences. You know, my dad used to remind me that uh, we can learn a lot from other people's mistakes so we don't have to re repeat them. And I've made a few mistakes, of course, along the way in my life. And so I'm going to use the podcast just to share life experiences, to talk about some good choices and not so good choices that I made. And hopefully it will inspire others to be able to learn from those mistakes. You know, I love being able to invest back in the younger generation. So anything I've learned at this point in life and I can share with the others and help them to avoid mistakes that I've made, I'm all for it. You know, Trudy, as, uh, as I look at your family business, a lot of young people work uh, for Chick-fil-A. What has it been like as you've gone through the various levels of working uh, in, your, in your company and in your family business and with those young people? What have you seen as an influence of your faith in God? How's that affected them? Well, a couple things I think of when I think about our team members and, and so many young people that work for us. One, we love to provide a place for them to work. Uh, we, we realize that most of these young people are never going to go into the restaurant business, but they're certainly going to have to live out life. And so one of the things that our operators do so well in their local communities is really invest in the lives of these young people. They don't have an investment as a franchise, as a restaurant, but they have an investment to be able to develop the people that are around them. So one, we're appreciative to these operators that will do that. 
many of the ways they do it is simply we live out their life in front of these young people and let them see how they handle business transactions, how they uh, interact with customers and just teach them what it means to be treating others with dignity and, and respect. If they can learn some of those life skills, that will set them up for so much success going forward. And we like to remind our team members right off the bat when we open any of our restaurants, we always have what we call a dedication dinner. And we spend time with our team members, even if their family members, to remind them that this business is really not ours. It belongs to the Lord. It's something we've learned from, from the Bible. It's something my parents have always taught us, that we're to steward well what we've been entrusted. And one of the things that God has entrusted to us are all these restaurants. And so we teach the team members and said, listen, this is God's business, and you're going to have to be honest and respectful and responsible in what you're doing because what, what the reason we're in business is to glorify God by being a faithful steward of all that's entrusted to us and to have a positive influence on all who come in contact with Chick-fil-A. So if these team members can learn to do this, I think God will use their lives in some really special ways as they get older. I love that commitment that you guys have at Chick-fil-A. My husband and I are pastors in town and we have literally opened, did the grand opening and prayer over the Chick-fil-A restaurants. It's so amazing. And today my boys have Chick-fil-A in their lunch, which makes me the coolest mom ever. So I'm <laughs> eternally grateful for that help. Tell us about the story of the penny and how it changed your life. Yes, I used to take piano lessons at the home of a piano teacher, and my brothers and I would go for our piano lessons, but I remember <laughs> a lesson at the piano. On my way out the door, I noticed a penny on Mr. Edwards' coffee table, and I simply picked up that penny without even thinking. I jumped in the car with my mother, and my mother noticed the penny in my hand, and she asked me, she said, Trudy, where did you get the penny? And I think that was the first time I thought, maybe I shouldn't have done what I just did. And Mother began to talk to me about the fact that is Mr. Edwards' penny. It's not yours, and you need to take it back and ask for forgiveness and return the penny to him. And, of course, man, I pitched all kind of fit in that car. I did not want to take that back. I explained to my mom, it's just a penny. I mean, you can't do a whole lot with a penny anyway. He'll probably never even knew the penny was there. He wouldn't know, but my mother was very persistent that I was to go back and return that penny to him. And so with tears streaming down my face, I showed up at his back door, knocked on the door and handed the penny to him. And of course I did say, I'm sorry, I took your penny and I just want to return it. But it marked, mar marked me for life. I'll tell you when I walk through a parking lot anywhere, if I see a penny or a nickel or a dime, I don't ever touch it because I kind of think right. it's not mine. So I can't, I can't pick it up. But I think it was a, a wonderful opportunity my mother uh, took advantage of a teaching opportunity to me uh, to be honest in all of our things and to be respectful of other people's things for sure. I love how in your podcast you're so sweet like this this sweet wise voice but then you come in with this really hard truth or question that really challenges you and I was like yes like for instance Paris you're lost how did you tie that story in to faith? Yeah, lostness is something we all experience. I think particularly of the season that we've been through in, in COVID, uh, we've had loss of jobs, loss of relationships, uh, loss of loved ones. It's been a diff difficult time for me as a teenager. I remember that experience of literally physically being lost in a big city and I didn't know my way around. And I realized that you know, for, for my life as a walk with the Lord, that God says he will always guide us. In fact, in the Old Testament, it says, whether you look to the right or to the left, you will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. And I'm so grateful for a God that cares so much for me that he will always be with me wherever I go. And if I ever find myself in a season of lostness, whether it's spiritually or physically or emotionally, he promises to be there and that if we'll seek him, uh, we'll find him and he'll kind of show us the way to, to move us from point A to point B. I just love like you were just talking about, you know, the seasons of losses, because a lot of us have been through that, of walking through that. And I just want to ask you, is there something recently that you've walked through where you just really experienced God on a whole new level in a whole different way that really helped you to understand him in a better way? Well, I appreciate that question. I, even during this COVID season, my mother-in-law passed away. She was in a nursing home. It was my, my husband's uh, mother, and she was a beautiful, wonderful lady that we all cared so, so much about. And it was very difficult to, to lose her. Family didn't get to see her or be with her. And that was just 
you know, you just would never imagine you'd have to walk through something like that. In fact, two days before that happened, I came down kind of sick and I was, wasn't was able to get out of the house. So I actually ended up having to stay home. My husband drove to Mississippi to be there for uh, with family and for the funeral. And that was really an odd time for me to, to be here alone by myself and not being able to be around family to support them. And I realized that the same thing that I've just mentioned, that God's presence is just powerful and that he can be anywhere at any time. And to me, that brings so much comfort. And that was a time when I just asked the Lord, I said, Lord, would you provide me with the peace and the, just the comfort and assurance uh, that you'll take care of whatever needs to be taken care of, even though I physically can't be there. And oftentimes we forget, we kind of feel like we have to do things on our own, but uh, God can provide the love and the joy and the peace that is needed um, in any season in any place. Trudy, could you just take a minute and pray for someone who's watching that might need some hope and some peace today? I would be more than happy to do that. Let's pray. Lord, you are a powerful God and how we love you so much. We come to you just to thank you uh, for who you are. You are, you are our Abba, you are Jehovah, you are Jireh, you are the God who heals. And Lord, for anyone who is listening today, I just pray that you would fill them with a sense of peace and comfort merely because of the fact that you promised that you are there with them. You have told us in your word, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And may those words just sink into the hearts and the minds of those who are listening today. And may your presence bring a calmness with them. them. That just as the verse that we talked about early from Isaiah, that in quietness, when we're quiet before you, and when we put our trust in you, that we can find strength. Will you strengthen our listeners today? In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Trudy. And just real quickly, the most important question of the year is, what do you order at Chick-fil-A? Uh, that's an easy one for me. For me, it's the chicken minis with sweet tea all the way. That's really my all-time favorite. And I'm really missing um, my mom and dad. I will order a Chick-fil-A sandwich because my dad always smells like chicken, so to get a chicken sandwich, I just kind of feel like I'm with my dad when I eat one of those sandwiches. Oh, I love that so much. Thank you so much for coming on the program today. Thanks for bringing hope. Thank you for your podcast along the way. You also have books and resources. We'll link all of her information on ctbn.org. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Wow, what a, what a wonderful lady. What an incredible family. What a, what a beautiful example of, um, you know, a life and a career and an organization well lived for the glory of God. We will be right back after this break. What might we be like if we spent time with Jesus the way the disciples did? After three years of spending every day with the Savior, they were changed from the inside out. They prayed and ate with Him and saw His love for His people. They rejoiced and suffered with Him. They walked the long, dusty journey alongside Him. Tom Hollis, Cornerstone COO and host of Hope Today, has written a new devotional called 100 Days with Jesus, A Journey Through the Gospels. Each entry of this devotional will focus on an aspect of Jesus' life, character, and teaching. Join Tom on a journey through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Walk with Jesus, feel his heart, and learn his ways. To receive your very own copy of 100 Days with Jesus, call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org slash donate. Request it when you give your best gift and we'll send it to you right away. We know that the reward of a life lived with Jesus is worth every step. Well, I hope you will call and get a copy of my devotional, 100 Days with Jesus. You know, this, guys, this grew out kind of organically. It was, it was started off as just emails that I would send to the prayer partners and other people just to encourage them, and it, it became a book. And one of the prayer partners, uh, she uh, uh, wrote me recently and said, I really am enjoying this, book, this devotional. She says, it's really helped me a lot. So uh, please call a prayer partner right now, and you can just, for, for, your, for any gift, your best gift, however you want to say it, uh, we'll be glad to send you a copy. I love that. Great job, Tom. Oh, thank you. It's awesome, too. <laughs>
right, and put in print. It sure is, and you know, just even thinking about, you know, walking with, you know, with Jesus, I was just thinking about when we just listening to Trudy and that what she was just sharing about when we walk with Jesus, we can make a kingdom impact in the marketplace. And I just think about, you know, the family, the faith of their family, mm -hmm. right? And how it's in, like changed all of our lives, right? With the forever. chicken forever. Yeah. It's my pleasure, right. you know, it's just, but what we can do in those seasons of just, you know, walking with Jesus, how we can just impact our world, influence our culture, and that's what we're called to yeah. be as the light. No, th and that's a great word, culture, because they brought the kingdom culture, they brought their corporation culture, and it has impacted our culture. I mean, there's literally lines wrapped around Chick-fil-A, <laughs> day and night, night and day, you wait in line, and it's because there's something, like she said, we're not in the chicken business, we're in the people business, Look, yeah. and we as Christians are in the people business, and we better not forget it. They're in the waffle fry business, <laughs> is what I think they're in. Uh, you know, they, uh, seriously though, they have the opportunity to invest in so many young people's lives. It's just a, a, an incredible opportunity, mm -hmm. and and to invest the the principles of the kingdom of God into people uh, is fantastic. And. You know, uh, guys, we've got people that have called into the prayer line, and you know, the prayer line's available to you 24-7. We really would uh, like you to take advantage of that. If it's the middle of the night, early morning, before you go to work, or maybe before you go to bed, you need someone to pray with about the things that concern you, call the prayer line and you'll get a hold of somebody that'll pray with you. Sid, I was wondering if, if I laid my hands on these, if you could just lift up all the requests. Sure. Father God, we just thank you for every single person that's called in today, Father God. And God, I just hear in my spirit that I just hear again, you're repositioning them to prosper in every area of their life, Father God, that Lord Jesus, I declare and decree that today they will rise up from their ashes, Father God, that you would give them the garment of praise instead of their spirit of heaviness, Father God. And Lord Jesus, I just pray that you would move that Holy Spirit, that you would breathe right now in that situation, in that living room. Father God, I just pray, I just feel it right now that you're going into the living room, you're going into the bedroom, you're going into the hospital, wherever they are watching from, Holy Spirit, I pray that you would touch them, that you would walk beside them, that you would speak to them, Father God, that God, I pray that you would be the new GPS in their life and redirecting them where you are calling them to go on their path. So we thank you, Father God, for all the people that are watching. We love them dearly, but we know you love them even more so, Lord God. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 I just hope people find God along the way and that they learn life lessons straight from Him, straight from the Holy Spirit, and that we're aware of His presence, we're aware of His hand, we're aware that He's in front of us, behind us, on side of us, He's all around us. And He, he wants to reach out and touch us, He wants to, to make a difference in our life today. So, so call on Him and you will see that difference. So we are so glad that you joined us for this very special hope today. And you know what? He loves you. Go get some Chick-fil-A too. Bless yourself with a sandwich. <laughs> we love you. Have a great day. <laughs> On tomorrow's Hope Today, encounter Jesus all over again. Author and pastor Mark Clark investigates the life of Jesus that is sure to draw you closer to him like never before. Don't miss tomorrow's Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.